welcome back to the vlog. It's a beautiful morning and I'm in Glen Tilt today and just on a bit of a recce just to see if I can find anything up in the hills here. And uh, it's a nice day, a little bit of cloudy sky, so uh, be interesting to see what we can find. And I wanted to talk today a little bit as well about aperture and uh, explain a bit of how aperture affects our images, how it affects our depth of field, and how we can use it to create more interesting photographs. But uh, anyway, let's go see what we can find. For those of you that don't really know anything about aperture, then just, in, just to give you a sort of a basic idea, if you could take your if you took your lens off of your camera and pointed it towards the light, you would see some blades, and in the centre of those blades, you would see a hole, and that hole is your aperture. And if we make that change, if we change the aperture on the camera, we increase the size of that hole, and we make it smaller. And the larger we make it, the more light that comes in through our lens and the smaller we make it, the less light. The more light, the brighter our image. The smaller the hole, the darker the image. And that's really briefly of what Aperture is doing. So if you're looking for the Aperture on the back of your camera, that's the number that has the F in front of it. The F is, basically stands for focal length, but you might have F2, F3, F8, F16, F22. And that's basically the setting of your aperture. And we'll talk about those numbers in a little while, but just understanding what they're doing and how they're working in relation to the lens and that hole in the lens is a big start to understanding aperture. Okay, I've come across my first image. And as usual, I've been drawn to the trees. We've got this horse chestnut draped in some moss that's just capturing the light with its main branch coming out towards me. And then we've got this moss covered tree behind. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's a horse chestnut as well, but uh, I haven't been in close to check it out just yet. So what I'm trying to do here, I know in most of the images that I take, I'm, I'm always saying I'm trying to separate the trees, but in this instance, obviously I'm not able to do that. Um, I'm either shooting up the hill towards them, which then I don't get the same composition. So what I am trying to do is make sure that I capture the base of that tree behind so that it doesn't just look like it's attached to the one in front. So I've dropped myself slightly lower just so that I can see the base of that tree sat behind. We've got some nice strong light coming down from the right hand side which is really helping to sort of help the moss really glow and stand out and I've taken the main branch so that it goes up into the right hand corner of my image just to give it that balance and I'm going to take a couple of shots I'll probably take a couple of landscape and a couple of portrait just to see which I prefer although I think really having the space around it really helps We've also got these birches in the background which are capturing the light and at this time of the year they're giving that lovely silvery monotone feel to them which I think really helps these two main trees to punch out into our image. So I'm going to take a couple of shots and uh, here's the image.
area, what I'm really doing is, is just taking in some of the scenery and just trying to get into my mind what it would be like at different times of the day, different times of the year. So when I come back again, I know what to expect. I'm looking at the trees and I'm looking at the mountains behind on the hills. What will they look like in the spring, summer, autumn? How will they look with snow on them? And really just looking around and making sure that I take everything in and don't miss any of those real important images that might be there. get confusing is that the smaller the F number, so for instance F2, the larger the aperture, the bigger the hole is that we're opening up in our lens. And that's because those F numbers represent a fraction. So F2 is a half, F4 is a quarter, and F8 is an eighth. And that fraction relates to the focal distance of our lens. So let's say for instance that we're photographing on an 80 millimeter lens and we've set our aperture to f2. So that's half of our 80 millimeters. So our aperture is going to be 40 millimeters wide. And if we set our aperture to f4, which is a quarter, then our aperture is going to be a quarter of that 80 millimeters. So it's only going to be 20 millimeters wide. stumbled upon this beautiful old pine that is just hanging on to the edge of the bank down up, up above the river and uh, I don't know if you can get a sort of sense of scale from this tree I'll uh, just try and see if I can show you just how big this tree is absolutely incredible and then the bark and the sort of gnarliness of it is just stunning we've got these lovely textures and colors and the tones we've got greens we've got yellows we've got browns absolutely stunning we have beautiful tree obviously been here for an incredibly long time so what I'm doing is I've got my long lens on I've got my 80 to 200 lens and what I'm doing is, is I'm zooming into this bark and really just just taking small parts of it just little features and trying to make little interesting compositions out of it um, it's using the colour, using the, the depth of the shadows within the bark. We've got some nice light that is behind me, which is helping to increase those tones. I have got a breakthrough filter on, a polarizer, just to really sort of help knock back some of the reflection. But actually, it's not doing a, making a huge difference, just really because the light's directly behind me. So what I'm going to do is take just a series of shots and just create some interesting patterns and textures and uh, yeah, should get some good images.
is a great example that uh, landscape photography doesn't always have to be about the big scene. Sometimes it's finding those interesting scenes within the detail. <music> Okay, so I've come across this lovely scene right on the edge of the river. And uh, I've got the mountains and a bit of a waterfall in the backdrop, but, but the light's too contrasty to really be able to capture anything there. But we've got these small grouping of rocks that are just coming off over into the water. And because of the late evening light, it's reflecting that sort of... We're getting some blue tones with the grey rocks and the different shades that are in there. I've also got a sort of small red rock which is just positioned slightly up onto the right there if you look on the back of my camera screen and you can see I've kind of positioned I've kind of got my composition so that the rocks start at the top right hand side and then come down into the left almost sort of halving the image I'm using a fairly long exposure because I I want to soften out the water I think the textures in the rocks are enough so I'm going to soften out the water but then that will help keep the golden colour of the golden light that's behind. So we've got a real contrast. We've got greys, we've got blues, and we've got the lovely golden colour in the water. I'm shooting on my 18 to, 80 to 200 lens. Um, and to keep that exposure long, I'm shooting at around about F16 and ISO probably 64 to 100, which gives me around about uh, just over a second in exposure time. So uh, I'm going to take a few shots and uh, here's the image. So what have we learned about apertures so far? We know that the smaller the number, the wider and larger the aperture. We know that that number is a fraction. So F2 is half of the focal range of the actual lens. So if it's an 80 millimeter lens, then if we've got it on an F2, half of that, we know that our aperture is open to 40 millimeters. But how does that affect our image? Well, the wider the aperture, the larger we make that hole, the shallower the depth of field. So if we look at my image on the back of the camera, for instance, we've got the lovely rocks in the foreground that disappear off into the rocks in the background. If I want those rocks in the background to be slightly out of focus, then what I do is I use a wider aperture that will soften my background. If I want all of those rocks to be nice and sharp, I use a narrow aperture and then that way I'll get nice sharp image from front to back. Now we do need to look at the 
range of the lens that we're actually using, but we'll cover that in another episode. And uh, hopefully that will give you a little bit of a, an overview of Aperture and how we use it. I think that's it for today. We're starting to lose the light and uh, it's getting quite chilly. So uh, if you're new to uh, Aperture, I hope that's given you a bit of a uh, understanding of how it works, how it can affect your images. And well, thank you for watching. I think it's been a good day. It's been a good recce. Not saying we've got any award-winning photos today, but uh, certainly lots of potential. And uh, if you've enjoyed the vlog, please hit subscribe leave a comment down below and don't forget to hit the bell so that you don't miss any future episodes and uh, well, I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.